Hi guys, I'm Belinda and welcome to my channel. On this video, I'm going to show you how I took this cupboard that I found on Marketplace and turned it into a gorgeous coastal sideboard. I paid $40 for this cupboard and it was advertised as a wooden sideboard with a small mark on top. A quick two hour round trip to go get it and this was what I brought home. A little bit more under the weather than I had anticipated, but I'm up for a challenge, so let's get into it. I started with 80 grit sandpaper. I put my sander into Rotex mode, which is quite aggressive. And as you can see, these are all the bubbles. This is caused by water that has seeped under the veneer and in turn has swollen the chipboard. 80 grit is quite aggressive and can be harsh. And if you use this to sand veneer, you will likely go through it. Now it's time to repair the areas that I've exposed with the sander. I've mixed up some Bondo, also known as Builder's Bog here in Australia, to fill those exposed areas of particle board. This is a two-part hardener that dries rock hard. It's best to work in small amounts, doing small areas at a time. I did two layers of Bondo and now it's time to sand. I'm going over with 120 grit and I have it on Rotex mode. Guys, if you don't have a heavy duty sander, don't go too heavy on the Bondo, just go lightly. It's quite time consuming to sand and you'll be there for ages. And now it's time to seal. I'm going over with some Zinzabin primer. This is a spirit based primer that contains shellac. You don't want to use a water based primer because water is an enemy here. If you were to use a water based sealer and you did find that there was still some chipboard exposed, the water could sit into the chipboard and not dry in a timely manner. Then you may experience a slight re-swelling again. After two coats of Zinza, I'm now going over with some timber filler. I've added some water and made it into a very runny wash. This will fill in any of the imperfections that weren't filled by the builder's bog. It's also helpful sometimes to do a fill after you've already primed because you can see the damage more once it's been primed. Paint will generally enhance any imperfections. So if it's just plain wood, they're not always as noticeable, but once it's painted, they're generally more noticeable. Once this was dry, I then gently sanded it with 180 grit. A 
a couple of taps and this Boeing shelf was easily knocked out. It was held in by a couple of nails on each side. It was simply a piece of chipboard covered in veneer. A while ago I picked up this sheet of MDF from Bunnings for $2 from the scrap bin. Um, it's come in perfect handy now. I've clamped my level to the bench and I'm using that as a straight edge to just cut it down to length. For the length cut, also known as the rip cut, I'm using this Craig rip cut guide. I simply attach the sled to the guide rail and then I attach my circular saw to the sled. My circular saw just slides on and there's two small arms that screw on and lock the saw into place. I now simply line my saw blade up to the measurement that I need and the front edge guide will keep my cut straight. Once locked into place I can do the same measurement over and over again. After clamping the MDF to the workbench, I simply ran the saw along and that gave me a nice straight cut. This I had to do twice because the first time I didn't set the saw to the right depth. Once all the repairs were complete, I gave it a good clean with Dixie Bell White Lightning. I then followed that up with a rinse off with water. If you cleaned your surface down before sanding, you'll avoid grinding the dirt into your surface and also into the pad. As the pad gets hotter, the dirt will melt onto the pad and then create swirls. So giving it a good clean beforehand will not only save you money, it will also save you time avoiding that extra sanding. A quick dust off and then I'm going over with my Zinsabin primer. For a nice smooth even coverage I'm using a 6mm microfiber roller. To avoid having to constantly clean this roller I just store it in an airtight container and it stays nice and fresh and I can pull it out at any moment and reuse it. I then follow it up with some aqua satin. Two on the inside and three on the top for a bit of extra durability. A light sanding of 220 grit or higher between each coat will also help you achieve a nice smooth finish in the end. I simply love this grass weave wallpaper. It's got gorgeous texture, so it was perfect for this project. I simply measured the door panel that I'd popped out earlier and cut to size with a sharp blade. Uh, a much easier way is to just layer your door panel on top of the wallpaper and trace around it. But this is what I'm used to, so this is what I do. For clean cuts with your wallpaper, make sure your blade is sharp and fresh. Uh, if your blade's a little bit dull, you may find that it will tear the wallpaper. Scissors are also a great option to cut your wallpaper. Do a dry fit first and then I like to go in with a nice heavy coating of PVA wood glue. Timber surface first followed by the back of the wallpaper. A nice generous even coating. Uh, paying particular attention to the edges because that's likely where the wallpaper will lift if it's ever going to lift. Ensuring your pattern is straight, it's now time to press out any bubbles and make sure that you have a good adhesion. 
Once the wallpaper was dry, I simply sanded off any overhang and lightly stapled on the door panels back to the door. I picked up this gorgeous roll of wrapping paper a while ago and this is the perfect project for it. I'm simply cutting it to size to cover the inside shelf. I also ended up using this as the drawer liners. A light coat of PVA glue, then working in small sections, I attached the wrapping paper to the board. I have found with decoupaging with wrapping paper, it's best to just start at one end, work your way along and push the bubbles out as you go. The two slots at the back here are for me to rebate some timber in to support the bowing top. Once dry, I went over with a very, very light coat of water-based polyurethane. I let that dry completely before going in with another four coats. For the green that I used inside the drawers and on the backing board, I just used some leftover green paint that I had on hand and I sealed it with some water-based polyurethane. The top was unsupported at the back and it had a slight bow in it, so to correct this I simply cut two lengths of timber and slotted them in. With these rebated in I can now have my backing board flush to the back. After sanding the drawer fronts back to raw, I'm now going over with a whitewash. I'm just using regular white paint and I'm doing 30% paint with 70% water. Going with the grain, I took my time and made sure that I got full coverage. Once that was dry, I followed up with two coats of water-based polyurethane to seal it.
on with the doors and I've replaced the old timber hardware with some nice new bronze pulls. I think she looks 100% better than what she did when she first came into the workshop. I'm absolutely over the moon. The textured doors are absolutely gorgeous and I'm going to keep this one. A whole lot of sweat through a heat wave and three days later she is complete. I must say I'm in love with this gum nut liner. With its beautiful earthy vibes it goes perfect with the green. I've added some wheels so now I can move her around. I'm going to keep her for a staging cupboard. She can also double up as a workbench when I need some extra space. If you've made it this far, I absolutely appreciate you coming along. I would love to hear what you think in the comments. It will make my day. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching.